Welcome to Lesson 10, where we talk about the vocal doubling effect. In Lesson 9, you created lots of voice tracks, layering them one at a time to sing harmony with yourself. Of course, you could use the same techniques to have other people sing harmony with you. Then you panned each track left or right and mixed each track's volume to taste. And you saw how to become a one-person band. In Lesson 10, we build on that to create the vocal doubling effect, commonly used in voiceovers for TV and radio commercials, lead vocals in pop music, and in rap music using a more extreme effect similar to the radio and TV ad version. Vocal doubling is used to add depth and dimension to our audio, creating a stereo effect from a single source. And now that we've done the very same thing in our harmony lessons, we know exactly how to do it. One common use of vocal doubling is in radio and TV ads, especially the hard sell kind. Here's an example. I'm going to read some fake text from a fake radio ad. So let's uh, open a track here, double click, arm it to record, and record. Are you ready for this? Come on down this Sunday for some wild and crazy deals. Bring the whole family. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Now it'll work. It'll get the message across. But for an ad like this, you almost always hear some sort of doubling going on. So what I'm going to do is bring in some doubling just on certain parts of this script. But first, I'm just going to record it all again on a second track. So disarm the first one, double click to open a second one, arm it to record, rewind to the beginning. Are you ready for this? Come, Come on down this Sunday for some wild and crazy deals. Bring the whole family. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Okay, you can probably start to hear where I'm going with this. Let's disarm this track. And I'm going to zoom in here just using the scroll wheel. Okay, the first part here... Are you ready for this? That part I do want to be doubled. I don't want this middle part to be doubled, and then I'm going to double the end too. So I'm going to come up here to uh, Snap Enabled. I want to turn that off. Otherwise, when I click, if I try to click in the middle here, it'll only let me click on those lines. We went over this in an earlier lesson. So if I click on this little magnet, I can disable the snap. There, now I can click anywhere I want. So I'm going to just select that item in track two by clicking on it. Hit the S key on the keyboard to split it. And now I'm going to hover over it until I get the double arrows with the bracket only on the right side. I don't want it in the middle, otherwise that'll just move the split point. I want to move it a little bit more to the right and there. Now if I drag the edge, clicking down on the left mouse button and dragging, I can just sort of peel back the rest of this and get rid of what's in the middle and then I'll have these two sections remaining. And that's fine because that's what I want to double. Remember when you do it this way we're doing non-destructive editing so I can always put that part back if I want to just by dragging it back. So let's go and listen to the first part again. Are you ready for this? See that already sounds better than are you ready for this? better being a relative term, I mean in terms of the hard sell, but it will sound even better if you pan these two things apart. And we know how to pan now too, don't we? Let's go ahead and pan them hard left and hard right. Are you ready for this? See that gives an entirely different dimension to it, doesn't it? Of course we have a problem now. Are you ready for this? Come on down this Sunday. The, the, top, the whole top track is now panned to the left. So if I wanted to pan them apart to get that separation, I would only want to pan this part of it and not that part. So how do I do that? Well, first, let's double click here and put it back to pan to dead center. I'm going to mute track two for now. Are you ready for the, So now that's coming from right in front of us, dead center. I'm going to click here and hit the S key again and I want to come over here between these two vocal parts and put S again. S means split. And what I want to do now is just pan this one so if I right click on it and go to item properties I can come down here where it says volume pan. This first one here is the volume and this is the pan. Let's pan that all the way left. Click OK and let's do the same thing for this third bit. Item Properties, Pan Left, 
OK. Now the first part and the last part will be panned left, but the middle part will be left dead center. Let's listen. Are you ready for this? Come on down this Sunday for some wild and crazy deals. Bring the whole family. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So now I can finish up just by unmuting the second track. And let's hear what we've got. Are you ready for this? Come on down this Sunday for some wild and crazy deals. Bring the whole family. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So there's an example of how this can be used to add dimension to just certain parts or all. Now let's talk a little bit about using doubling in the pop music world. I'm not huge into rap, but this particular technique is very common. So let's go ahead and open up a track here. Just double click to open that track. And as an example, I'm going to use something from Commentary the Musical, which is actually the commentary track to Dr. Horrible's sing-along block. Hopefully you're familiar with that, but uh, but if not, this is a Zach Whedon's Zach's rap. And I'm just going to do the first couple of lines, and uh, and then I'll show you where the doubling normally comes in. All right, you ready for this? I'm not sure I am. <laughs> Let's go. Arm, and then record. I don't do songs. I'm all about the written word, and you should see me write graffiti. Concrete's preferred. There's nothing worse than hearing verse I'm like a Tweety Bird, unless it's screaming because I'm beating up a theater nerd. Or haven't you heard? Yeah, it's not that great, I know. Like Neil says later in the commentary, no, I can't rap. That was painful. All right, let's get back to it now. I'm going to just double. Uh, Reaper does default to having the snap turned on so remember you can turn it off by clicking on this magnet okay in rap frequently the doubling doesn't happen all the way through but only comes in on certain parts sort of like this let's disarm the first track create a second track arm it rewind it and go forward I don't, I don't do songs. songs. I'm all about the written word. And you should see me write graffiti. Concrete's preferred. There's nothing worse than hearing a verse I'm like a Tweety Bird. Unless it's screaming because I'm beating up a theater nerd. Or haven't you heard? Get the idea? Now, it doesn't really sound like much just yet. But I'm going to go ahead and pan just this second track. Let me disarm it. Just about, I don't know, how about 30% to the right. I don't, I don't do songs. songs. I'm all about the written word. And you should see me write graffiti. Concrete's preferred. Now it's a little loud, so I'll mix it by reducing the volume by, I don't know, let's try negative eight. I don't, I don't do, do songs. songs. I'm all about the written word. And you should see me write graffiti. Concrete's preferred. There's nothing worse than hearing a verse I'm like a Tweety Bird. So there's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to record the whole thing and to pan them both left and right. Let's come over and pan this about 35%, 36%, whatever, to the left. And we'll put that one about the same to the right. And equalize the volumes this time. I don't do songs. I'm all about the written word. And you should see me write graffiti. Concrete's preferred. So you can see the two different ways to do it there. There actually is a third way. <laughs> so let's talk about stereo, though, for a minute. Some of you may have thought of this already. Instead of trying to re-sing it with all the timing, what if you just copied and pasted the exact same performance? By the way, you can do this very easily, just like in any Windows program. You just hold down the Control key and drag this, and you've now created a, an exact copy. But here's the problem. First, just to demonstrate this, let's pan them both dead center. So you just double click on them both to get them back to dead center. Let's mute the second track and remind ourselves of what just one of these files sounds like. I don't do songs. I'm all about the written word. OK, that's going straight up. And now let's listen to both. I don't do songs. I'm all about the written word. Sounds exactly the same, just louder, right? As this indicator down here tells us. Let's turn that down. Okay, now let's pan them both hard left and right. 100% left, 100% right. I don't do songs. I'm all about the written word. What's up with that? It still sounds exactly the same, doesn't it? That's because they're exactly the same audio file. They won't sound any different to the human ear unless there's something different about one or the other of the files. 
one way you can sort of trick the human ear to give it that depth and dimension, which it doesn't have if they both occupy the exact same space and time, which they do now, is to offset one of them by about 40 milliseconds, maybe 30. Let's go into the second track, right mouse click on it, go to item properties, and now let's offset this, change that second to last zero to a four to move it over by 40 milliseconds, click OK, and now take a listen. I don't do songs, I'm all about the written word, and you should see me write graffiti, concrete's preferred. See, you can actually start to get a stereo effect that way. 40 milliseconds is actually right about where the human ear perceives two different sounds, so it does actually sound like it's doubled. So that's pretty cool by itself. But if we go in here and change that to a 30 now, instead of a 40, I don't do songs. I'm all about the written word. See, it sounds then like it's just one file, but it's in stereo. So that's a shortcut way to get that effect. It's a slightly different effect, but it's sort of a different way to do the same thing. And finally, let's talk about how vocal doubling is used in just about every pop and country song out there nowadays. It's actually fairly subtle. It's usually employed right before and then during the chorus of the song. In the Newbie's Guide to Audio Recording Awesomeness Part 1, I use the example of Stacy's Mom, which is a song by the group Fountains of Wayne. And right before the chorus is something called the pre-chorus. A lot of songs have that. So in the song, the singer is singing just straight, one voice, until he gets to the pre-chorus, and then his voice is doubled for the pre-chorus, and then throughout the chorus it's all kinds of harmonies and and the tracks are doubled and tripled like we did in Lesson 9. But uh, basically how that works, is it'll go along something like this. Is she there or is she trying to give me the slip? You know I'm not the little boy that I used to be. I'm all grown up now, baby, can't you see? So that's just one voice going straight and singing not doubled or anything like that. And then on the second track, I will disarm this and I will arm this. This part remains the same. And I'm going to start recording right about here. But then it gets doubled for the pre-chorus, which is these second two sets of blobs, like so. Hip, hip, hip. You know I'm not the little boy that I used to be. I'm all grown up now, baby, can't you see? But because this effect is meant to be somewhat subtle, there isn't going to be much, if any, panning going on. So let me go ahead and disarm that track. So what will happen is this second vocal will usually be turned down significantly and um, probably not panned at all. Here's how it would sound all together. Is she there or is she trying to give me the slip? You know I'm not the little boy that I used to be. I'm all grown up now, baby, can't you see? It sort of builds the intensity as the song goes on. And then as the chorus ends, it will come back to the single voice again, and then it will build up during the pre-chorus with a doubling, and so on and so forth. So those are some of the most common uses of vocal doubling. You've heard it before, though you may not have known it. You've probably never heard John Lennon of the Beatles sing without doubling. Like I said, it's also common in rap and lately just about any pop or rock song that's on the radio. So that's it for the vocal doubling lesson. We'll see you back here for lesson 11.